What's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another New York Giants training camp recap video. Once again, today, very similar to yesterday's training camp, they had to move it inside due to the weather. Although yesterday they claimed it was due to lightning strikes in the area. Hey, whether it was for better or worse, both of these practices seem to have a bit more energy in them. I think it's because, I don't know, the players are still getting used to the eyes being back on them. And the weather in the New York, New Jersey area has been crazy. It sort of always is during the summer season. Sometimes you got days that are super hot, then you got thunderstorm days, then you got days that are a little bit too cold. It's just the New York, New Jersey area. But let's talk about the couple standouts. In general, like I said, it was a very competitive day. The defense and the offense were on their game. Uh, two people that really stand out to me, um, Daniel Jones, he continues improving. Eli Manning continues to look sharp. That's on the offensive side. On the defensive side, we kind of finally saw a spark on one player that I didn't really have too many expectations for, Antoine Bethea, the veteran free safety that we signed, former Cardinal. And the defensive back group as a whole, they had a really good day today. So I want to start off with Antoine Bethea. Like I said, I didn't really expect much from him throughout the training camp because I'm like, he's a veteran, he's gonna do what he has to do. He's probably gonna go out there and have a good season for us, you know? Make a couple tackles, maybe a few batted balls, if we're lucky, probably like four or five interceptions or more on the season. Who knows, but today he came out and he showed out. Now, Bethea made his bread and butter in the two minute drills today. In this specific situation, the offense was given the ball on their own 40 yard line with a minute and 45 seconds left on the clock. They also had two timeouts left and they just needed one touchdown. So the way it went for the first the first team reps, you know, the stars and whatnot, it first got began with an incomplete throw by Eli. And that was batted down at the line of scrimmage. Then he had a completed slant to Cody Latimer on the second down. And on the third to two, he tried to get Saquon in the flats. But that's where Bethea jumped the ball, made a great defensive read and defensive play, and got an interception. And I say great defensive play because um Whoever was on Saquon, I think it might have been Drabil Peppers or some other cornerback. They got burnt in coverage, and Bethea recognized it and came over just in time to make the play. Of course, got everybody a little bit excited. I mean, it's not every day that uh, you kind of best the offense, especially when a play involves Saquon and, not, and whatnot, but it got the defense a little bit excited, and that energy carried over to the second team where they tried to, even though they had a little bit more success, the defense still showed up and made it hard for them. With the second team, they start off with two incomplete passes. First one was a Julian Love pass breakup, and the second one was another pass breakup by Michael Thomas, but it really could have been an interception. He just dropped the ball a little bit. After that, though, Jones got into the zone. He hit a couple great, great completed passes to Alonzo Russell, Garrett Dickerson, and uh, Ronald Zamort. I'll be honest with y'all. I've never heard him before. Most likely an undrafted free agent. But it was that guy, Ronald Zamora, that went up to grab the touchdown. And like I said, the offense had a little bit of energy. They started uh, jawing back at the defense, who for some reason were uh, trash talking Garrett Dickerson. He's one of the undrafted tight ends along CJ Conrad. I think CJ Conrad has a better chance of making the team. He's just, in my opinion, a better overall player and specimen that, than Dickerson is. No disrespect to Dickerson. But Conrad. He plays like a mini Evan Ingram that could block like Red Ellison, kind of like a combination of our two best tight ends. I'm going to be honest, guys. I forgot what the last thing I said was, and uh, there's not much time for me to go and edit. That's that's mad work. So I'm going to just continue from where I thought I left off on my notes here. Pretty sure I was talking about Garrett Dickerson and CJ Conrad. I just think CJ has a better chance of making the team. Um, but that's about it on the second team. The third group led by Alex Tanney. They had the same situation, and while it initially started out with Tanny, uh, Laletta had to check in, and he had two batted balls and a pass breakup by Zamort, but he eventually got a touchdown to Reggie White Jr. for the offense to take the overall day on the two-minute drills. Another standout player from today, uh, second stringer wide receiver Alonzo Russell. I'm pretty sure I mentioned him in a last video or two videos ago when I was talking about how Alonzo Russell and Evan Ingram had uh, the two best days from a receiving standpoint. He's really become a favorite target of Daniel Jones and it's great to see that happening because whether or not he makes the team, I'm pretty sure he'll make the team as a number five or a number six, probably that last receiver spot. 
whenever he's in there and Daniel's in there, they apply that chemistry together. They work out great timing together. Kind of like what Eli is trying to do with Golden Tate, even though there's no news yet on whether or not his suspension is going to get appealed. You know, that's all up to the NFL. Kind of a great segue for me to go into Eli and Golden Tate. They've been practicing a lot together. He's be quickly became Eli's favorite target when Shepard is out. Um, and he still throws the ball down to Ingram. But Tate is just, like I said, he's playing with a chip on his shoulder because the NFL, it looks like they won't repeal his suspension, his four-game suspension. So every ball that comes his way, he just tries to get up there and get it down and try to make some great yards after the catch. And Eli in general, like I said, he had that interception on Bethea, but, but in general, he's been looking sharp. That baseball training or whatever he's doing, whatever he's doing with his neighbor that's a baseball trainer is working out for his arm. Still not looking like, you know, he's getting tired like he used to just last year of training camp and years before. Keeping up that strength and energy. Just a couple other people that had a relatively good day today. Evan Ingram, he was on the field doing his thing with the crossing patterns, using his speed and his size to get past the defense. Sam Beal was back on the field um, a little bit. I'm not sure if he's fully healed up from his hamstring strain, but he was back on the field in tight coverage in Russell Shepard. Uh, Daniel Jones tried to get the ball to Shepard, but it went in and out. Beal reached around to tap it away. TJ Jones, the wide receiver that we signed last week, he had a really good day, almost made a great play. Um, and you guys could decide whether or not it was Jones's fault for not getting there in time or Loletta's fault for overthrowing the pass. But Jones got behind the defense and was running deep down the sideline. And Loletta, what the reporters are saying is he basically overthrew the pass and he Jones couldn't, you know, jump and get it or anything. It just fell on the ground and whatnot. And finally, during the one-on-ones, the first team offensive line showing their improvement. You know, the new lineup we got left to right, Nate Solder, Will Hernandez, John Jalapio, Kevin Zeitler, and Mike Remmers. They won all five of their one-on-one matchups with the defensive line. And these drills apparently are always um, harder for the offensive linemen to win. This time, they, the guys did a great job. Nate Solder, he stuffed Lorenzo Carter, who tried to get outside. Mike Remmers, he tried to handle Kareem Martin's rush. Will Hernandez and Kevin Zeitler, they, uh, along with John Hopio, they basically took on our three main defensive tackles, B.J. Hill, Dexter Lawrence, and Dalvin Thomason. And somehow, they pulled out a win on each of the tries that they had. So yeah, in all in all, a very good day for both the offense and defense. I love to see that the offensive line is improving. Um, obviously, there's going to be some people out there that says that just means the defensive line is not good enough to get around our offensive line, but it's been revamped to the point where I think we're like one step away from being the at the state at the level that we need to be. Depending on how Mike Remmers performs, he could be our right tackle of the future, but I honestly think we could find somebody better in free agency next year or in the draft next year. But it's nice to see that improvement. It's nice to see the defensive backs doing the work, the veterans out there leading by example, and that energy they had, very similar to what they had in OTAs, jawing at each other, trash talking each other, but in a friendly way to try and motivate each other to do better. That's what I got for you all today. Leave your comments down below, your thoughts, like, share, subscribe. I'm out. You're...